Welcome to the next Fitzit lesson. Um, today's lesson we're going to pursuing a theme we've ex we were exploring in the last um, set of lessons, so uh, a lesson particularly for the neck and shoulders. But uh, let's just warm up a little bit. So if you just make sure, if possible, that you're sitting towards the front edge of, the, of your chair and then just take a moment to notice um, the overall shape of your spine. Quite often there's this tendency to round back off the back of the sit bones. So if you find that's happening, don't be shy about pushing the lower tummy sort of out and down towards the pubic bone to help lengthen up through the spine. And once you've found that length in the spine, just notice how you've chosen to place the feet. If you have your feet tucked behind, could you bring the heels more or less underneath the knees? And then observe whether your knees tend to fall into the midline or slightly out of, out of the midline. So you want to have the knees more or less underneath the heels. And then have the arms just comfortably by your side and begin to lift the shoulders all the way up towards the ears and then just let them fall away from the ears. So just bringing the shoulders up towards the ears and letting them fall away from the ears. And the thing just to be careful of here is that you're not substituting lifting the elbows to get the shoulders up. So elbows soft, arms just soft and long. Once more, just bringing the shoulders up towards the ears and letting them fall away from the ears. And then this time, bring the shoulders up to the ears, roll them forward and down and try to squeeze them together behind you. So you come up towards the ears, forward and down, squeeze the shoulders behind you and then up towards the ears, forward and down, and then reverse the direction. So you come forward, roll them up towards the ears, try to squeeze them together behind and down, and forward, up towards the ears, squeeze them together and down, and once more in this direction, and then release. Bring the fingertips onto your shoulders, and then circle the elbows together and wide. As you're bringing the elbows to, um, forward, you're trying to touch the elbows together, but even if they don't touch, that's fine, but have the idea they're coming together. And then as you take the elbows wide, remember to squeeze the shoulders together as part of that movement of taking the elbows wide. So you squeeze them together to help open the chest, and then just reverse the direction of these circles. So easy breathing, jaw nice and relaxed, eyes as much as possible focused on the horizon. And we'll just do one more circle, drawing the shoulder blades together as part of that. Now pause, and then bring your right hand, so I'm mirroring, behind the back of the head, just keeping the elbow slightly forward of the line of the body, and think of reaching the arm up, and out to the side and then switch hands so the left hand just brushes the back of the head super softly you reach the arm up and out and as you're reaching it's as if you're trying to touch the ceiling and then you bring the arm out and down so allowing yourself to side bend effectively or involve the pelvis and the spine in the reaching of the arms so there's a little shift of weight from one side to the other as the spine is part of the movement of the arm. Good, please leave that alone. And then um, bring your hands together and just touch the fingers lightly into each other and then think of stretching the hands forward so the heel of the hands come together and release. And then point the fingers down towards the floor, release towards me, release, towards the ceiling, release, and then towards yourself, if possible, release. So once more towards the ceiling, uh, towards me, towards the floor, towards
towards me, towards the ceiling, and then if possible, towards yourself, release. Now, pause, press the palms and the knuckle, the base knuckle, into each other as you just extend the fingers back and wide, release. So you're just pressing the palms into each other as you take the fingers back and wide, release. And once more, just press the palms into each other to take the fingers back and wide. And then interlace the hands super softly and just wrestle the wrists around each other. Just looking for a very easy uh, range of motion so you're not trying to force anything. And then pause and switch so you have the other index finger on top. And then again, just begin to loosely wrestle the wrist. You can feel how this movement flows through the arm into the elbows and the shoulders. And now pause, just flex back the fingers and palms, check that your elbows are in line with the wrists, and then just think of the elbows coming towards each other to improve the contact between the two hands, release. Just think of the elbows coming together and release. And then turn that around, so other hand position, elbows in line with the wrists, and just think of the elbows coming towards each other, release, once more towards each other, and release. And then this time, hook the tips of the fingers over each other, still keep, keeping the elbows in line with the wrists. And now think of your shoulder blades drawing together um, to help pull the fingertips apart, release and then turn that around so the other fingertips are on top. Think of just squeezing the shoulder blades together and then release. Now take hold of one forearm and then the other forearm, again with soft hands, and think you're just wringing out the arms in the opposite direction, release, just repeating that, and release, and then turn the arms around the other side, and then again just as they are wringing out the bones of the arms, release, and then once more contracting, good, and then release. Now, bring the elbows to the side of the body, and as you do that, you'll remember it's important to try and keep the elbow either in line with the shoulder or slightly in front of the shoulder. If the elbow disappears behind you, it will tend to push that bone, the head of the bone, forward. So, and then think of just squeezing your shoulders together as you inhale, to take the hands wide, but keeping the elbows tucked in, and then come back to centre. And then once more, think of the shoulder blades just squeezing together, and then release. And once more, shoulder blades drawing together to take the hands wide, release. Now pause, turn the palms to face each other, same thing. So shoulders first, to take the hands wide, and release shoulder blades together to take the hands wide, good, and then release. And now this time have the hands facing down, but keeping the wrists nice and neutral so you're not dropping the fingers. And again, think of your shoulder blades squeezing together to take the hands wide, release. And once more, shoulder blades to take the hands wide, release. Turn the palms back to face each other, and shoulder blades drawing together to take the hands wide. And now release the shoulder blades as the fingertips just come to touch sort of above and in front of the head, come back to centre, and then once more squeeze the shoulder blades together, take the hands wide, and then you take the arms up, and then you come back to centre and release. Now just bring your right hand to the area of the lower back and then just begin to, as if you're massaging yourself with the back of the hand, just wherever you can reach to on the other side of the, of the body and you can reverse the direction of those circles and then pause with the hand in the area of the lower back and think of just taking your elbow back in space and release. So you're trying to stay looking forward as the elbow goes back in space. 
and once more just think of the elbow going back and see if you can just notice how the shoulder blade as you take the elbow back it just moves a little bit towards the spine and then the next time see if you can think of before uh, to take the elbow back more deliberately drawing that shoulder back first to take the elbow back so you think of that shoulder blade moving back towards the spine to take the elbow back and release. Just bring that hand forward and then take the left hand into the area of the back and just make some circles or um, uh, trying to reach the other side of the body wherever you can is fine and then just reverse the direction of those circles and then fix the hand in place and just think of the elbow going back in space and release. Elbow just going back in space but looking forward, release. And just a few more, so you feel, can you feel that movement of the shoulder blades, the shoulder blade going back and can you initiate the taking of the elbow back by more deliberately contracting that shoulder drawing that shoulder blade back to the spine and then release. And then this time bring both hands into the area of the lower back and then think of both elbows going back in space and release. And then as the elbows go back just look up slightly, think of the tummy just rolling forward and release. So as the elbows go back, we're just looking up slightly with the chest and the, and the head and eyes, release. And now, can you think of, first of all, squeezing the shoulder blades together to take the elbows back as you look up. Good. And once more, el shoulder blades initiating the movement as you look up. Good. And then release. And then um, please just bring that hands to rest on the thighs and bring your right hand onto the top of the head. So just lightly making contact into the top of the head and the elbow is still pointing just slightly in front of me so I'm not trying to take the elbow too far back. And then begin to direct the elbow towards the right um, side of the pelvis and then come back. So you remember this is our side bending movement. You think of the elbow, the right elbow, going in a little arc towards the right hip and then come back to centre. And once more the elbow going to the hip and then come back to centre. So as you all know by now, we're trying not to tilt the spine but side bending the spine towards the left so that the right side of the pelvis becomes light, the ribs move to the left, and your left shoulder is going to the left and slightly up as part of that movement. Just pause, bring that hand onto the thigh. And whilst that memory of that movement is, is there, can you just side bend over to the left and then come back. So the right side of the pelvis lifts, you can press into the right foot to help, but as part of this allowing the ribs to move over to the left and that left shoulder is moved in space to the left and slightly up, but we're able to keep our head and eyes more or less in the middle Good. and then come back to centre. And then please bring your uh, left hand onto the top of the head in super light contact. It's as though the hand is drawing the spine up towards it. And then begin to move the elbow in an arc towards the left side of the pelvis. So nice, easy breathing. Just moving the elbow towards the left side of the pelvis. And as you're doing this, just notice how the left side of the pelvis becomes light, 
the ribs are moving over to the right and how your right shoulder is going to the right and up as part of this side bending and then release. And then try again whilst the memory of that movement is strong can you press into the left foot think of the left side of the pelvis becoming light to bring the weight pour the weight over onto the right hand side right hand side through side bending and then pause and let's go from one side to the other so Press into the right foot to side bend over to the left. Come back to centre. Press into the left foot to side bend over to the right. And then come back to centre. So once more over to the left. So this in walking is our ability to stand on the left leg, the left hip joint without tilting and coming back. And then press into the left foot to bring the weight over onto the right sit bone. And then come back. Just do a few more. Really thinking, can you initiate this from the feet and the pelvis going from side to side. As opposed to trying to first do the shoulders and pull, pull the pelvis over. So you're really trying to refine the ability to weight transfer through our, our middle. Good. Now, pause for a moment. And then please bring your weight onto the left side. And just see, can you stay there, just observing the asymmetry, the left shoulder is higher than the right, the, the right side is shorter. And could you move the right knee little bit forward and a little bit back. So just a little bit straight forward and straight back, not out to the side. So forward and back. So you can feel how the right sitting bone is sort of almost polishing the seat of the chair. Come back to two sit bones and then bring the weight over onto the right sit bone. And then see if you can stay there and breathe and just move your left knee a little bit forward and a little bit back. Okay. A nice easy breathing, ability to stand on one leg as we're moving the other leg forward and back. Good. And then come back to two sit bones. And then let's put this into a more of a movement. So you bring the weight onto the left sit bone, stay there, move your right knee back in space, transfer the weight onto two sit bones, shift over to the right, bring your left knee back, keep it there as you bring the weight onto two sit bones, and then continue just nice and slowly to walk back through weight transference to the back edge of your chair. And then just take a moment to rest on the back of the chair and then begin to come forward again. So press into the left foot to bring the weight on to the right hand side. Allow your left knee to come forward. Bring the weight on to two sit bones. Transfer over onto the left. Bring your right knee forward, come on to two sit bones, and then continue just to walk forward again until you come towards the front edge of the chair. Now, um, the, uh, another lesson that we've often explored is your ability to rotate around your centre axis. So, for example, think of your right knee going back and your left knee going forward and then come back so right knee back left knee forward and then come back so we're initiating a turn that you can begin to continue by allowing 
the hands to slide on the thighs, the, the chest to turn, the head and eyes to turn towards the right, and then come back to center. So again, right knee back, left knee forward, allow the hands to slide, to turn to look towards your left, so that the shoulders are turning, the chest is turning, the head and eyes are turning, and then come back to center. And then we can explore that to the other side. So you think of the left knee going back, the right knee forward, sliding the hands so that the chest turns, the ribs turn, the head and eyes turn to look towards the left. And then you come back to centre. So once more to the left. So right knee goes forward, left knee back. You're allowing the hands to slide so the shoulders turn and the head and eyes turn towards the left, good, and then come back to centre. And then just go once to the right, so right knee back, left knee forward, turning the head and eyes, and come back. And each time, and then going to the other side, you're thinking of getting taller, taller, as you explore this ability to turn around yourself, and then come back to centre. And then um, uh, after rotation, we have this ability to flex and extend the spine. So if you just bring the fingertips of both hands onto the forehead, so your elbows are pointing forward. And you remember this, um, if you just rest the hands for a minute while I explain, this idea of a line, a line, from your outer shoulder to your outer, outer hip, a line there, so that when you begin to, with the hands on the forehead, you think of the elbows going forward and up, letting the tummy out, you're trying to keep that line of the outer shoulder to the outer hip. And when you bring the elbows down, letting the chest round and the back round, the, you're still thinking of that line to the outer shoulder, to the outer, outer hip. So let's just do that a few more times, just bringing the fingertips onto the forehead. Again, think of that line as you're just letting the elbows go slightly forward and up, and then the elbows slightly down as you're rounding, rounding the back. So we're looking just to evenly extend and round the back, letting the whole of the back participate rather than it just being in the neck. Just rest the hands on the thighs for a moment. And then um, please bring the, just the right fingertips on the forehead. And again, just thinking of that line from the outer shoulders to the outer hip, could you just think of the elbow going forward and up? and then down slightly. So elbow slightly forward and up, thinking of that line, and then down. But not a big movement in, um, the elbow isn't moving far in space. And you're really again just thinking, can you move the elbow because of how you're moving in the middle? Okay. Just rest that hand for a second. And then please bring your left hand fingertips onto the forehead. And we're just doing a few, just to get this back in the memory really. Elbow going forward and up, thinking of the line. Elbow going down as you're rounding the back. So just forward and up. And then down. Good. And then pause, leave it alone. And then... Um, please turn to your right. Just turn to your right so that your shoulders, your chest are turned to the right and your head and eyes are turned to the right. And then bring your right fingertips onto the forehead and then begin to move the elbow down towards the tummy and think of the elbow going forward and up. So elbow down towards the tummy, 
elbow forward and up. And just see as you're exploring this nice and slowly, can you feel, can you allow when the elbow comes down, the weight as the back rounds, your weight has come onto the left sit bone. As the elbow goes forward and up, you're pushing out the tummy and the weight has moved over onto the right sit bone. So just doing a few more of these, staying turned to your comfortable right, just feeling that shift of weight to one hip joint and then the other. Okay. Just pause. And then um, once more, turn to your right, turn to your right. So, I've moved my left hand over onto the right thigh just to give me a bit more support and have the other hand wherever is comfortable for you, be resting on the thigh or on the, on the chair. And in, just with this now, can you just repeat what we did but without the hand on the forehead so that you're looking down, letting the weight shift onto your left sit bone and then as you're looking up slightly you're pushing out the tummy and letting that shift, the weight shift on to the right sit bone. So just exploring, extending the spine and rounding the spine, but really feeling that shift of weight to the one sit bone and then the other. Pause, just have a, a rest. And then um, once more, turn to your right again. So same position, arms are down this time. And now, could you lower the head, lower the head, keep it lowered, and then can you shift the weight towards one sit bone and then the other, keeping the head lowered. So you push out the tummy, to shift the weight over onto the right sit bone, you round the back to bring the weight onto the left sit bone. But keeping the head down, eyes looking down, just moving, transferring the weight to the one sit bone and then the other. Just feeling what movements you can sense in the spine and the ribs as you do that and then come back to centre. And then um, please turn to your left, left. So I've moved my right hand over onto the left thigh. Bring the left fingertips onto your forehead and just think what's it like to bring the elbow down towards the tummy, elbow going forward and up. So elbow down towards the tummy, feeling the weight rounds back onto the right sit bone. You push out the tummy for the elbow to go up. So, so in just feeling that shift of weight to the one side and then the other. And then just pause for a moment. And then um, once more turn to your left and this time have the arms down and could you again just round the back looking down to bring the weight onto the right sit bone, pushing out the tummy to look up. But you're staying turned to the left as you do this, just exploring the ability to move from the pelvis to look up and down and shift the weight. Good. And then pause, come back to centre. And then once more turn to your left again. Stay there, the arms down, lower the head. And then can you keep the head lowered as you're shifting the weight towards 
one sit bone and then the other, but keeping the head down. Easy, easy breathing. And then come back to centre. And once you come back to centre, then just take a rest. So uh, let's just walk back towards the back edge of your chair through our ability to side bend. Side bend. And then once you've had that little rest, then begin to walk forward again. That's it, through side bending to back to the front edge of the chair. Now, um, bring your right index finger onto the tip of the chin, so just from, the, from the side. And just press your chin towards your throat to lengthen through the back of the neck. Release. So you're just as if you're giving yourself a double chin, pressing the chin back lightly towards the throat so that you lengthen through the back of the neck. And as you do that the next time, think of your as the chin comes towards the throat, the head is going up and back and release. So the chin, chin comes towards the throat and you think of the head going up and back. So, so not head down, as if you had, if you just pause for a minute, if you imagine you have an, an, one of those enormous uh, an enormous ball here, like one of those gym balls, enormous ball, you're thinking of going up and over as you bring the chin to the throat and then you come back to centre. So not dropping back, not tilting the head back so much, it's as the chin comes towards the throat, you're moving the head up and back uh, to feel that lift in the in the chest. Good. Now, once you've done that, please turn again to your right. Turn again to your right, with the arms just down by your side, and think of your chin coming closer to the throat as you take the head up and back, and then come back to centre. So, chin to the throat, as if you're holding a tangerine underneath the chin. Think of the head going up and back and release. Okay, once more, chin to the throat. Think of the head going up and back Good. and release. And then the next time, chin to the throat, head up and back. So you feel uh, the part of the spine is extending and stay there and then could you move your chin away from the throat and towards the throat. So you're staying with the head up and back, moving the chin towards the throat and away from the throat. Good. And then leave that alone and come back to centre. And then once more, turn to your right, turn to your right. Think of the chin coming towards the throat as you take the head up and back, but bring the weight as you do that onto the right sit bone and then come back. So you bring the chin to the throat, think of the head going up and back as you push out the tummy to bring the weight onto the right sit bone and then come back. Take okay. chin to the throat, head up and back as you push the tummy, tummy out to extend the back. Good. And then please leave that alone, come back to centre.
and then um, let's go to the other side. So you just turn the body to your comfortable left. Stay there. And first of all, just think of bringing the chin close to the throat as you lift the head up and back and release. So chin close to the throat, head up and back, release. Once more, chin close to the throat, head up and back. And then stay there. Can you move the chin up and then back towards the throat? Chin up, then back towards the throat. Chin up back towards the throat, good, and release. And then once more, turn to your comfortable right, uh, left, sorry, my mistake, to the left. And now can you, as you bring the chin to the throat, lifting the head up and back, can you allow weight to shift onto the left sit bone and then come back? So, chin in, lifting the head up and back, letting the tummy push forward to bring the weight over onto the left sit bone. Chin in, head up and back, letting the tummy push forward to bring the weight over onto the left sit bone. Good. And then come back to centre. When you come back to centre, have the hands on the thighs again and just think of turning everything to look to your right and come back to centre and then turning everything to look towards the left and then come back to centre. Now, um, I think two weeks ago we did a lesson bringing the arms out to the, to the side at shoulder height, you remember, um, where the arms just sort of slightly in front of the body, not behind the body, but in line with the shoulder, and we had soft fists. And then just bring the arms back down. So, you remember, we had the arms, again, bringing the arms out to the side, and you can take your feet a bit wider, and we began to um, turn one fist up as the other turns down and then we were reversing, going to the other side. So that you're thinking of lengthening one arm away from you and then the other, but turning the arms around themselves so that your shoulder, shoulder blades are very much part of this movement. Just going from one side to the other, looking towards the hand that's turning up from side to side. Good. And then just pause and take a rest for a moment. Good. Now, um, please bring your left arm just to the inside of the left leg, okay. so just to the inside of the left leg. Other hand is just resting on the thigh and begin to, to turn the arm around itself as you're reaching down towards the floor and then you turn the arm the other way as you come back up to sitting. So you're turning the arm, the fist around itself as you reach down towards the floor and then you're turning the shoulder and the arm the other way. So either screwing something in or unscrewing it, that's it, as you're just going down towards the floor and then coming back up. But stay looking at the arm as you're reaching it down and then coming back up. So just share that from the side, you're just reaching it down and then drawing the shoulder up, reaching it down and then coming back up.
And just notice as you're reaching the arm down, are you screwing something into the floor or are you um, unscrewing it? Uh, which direction are you turning the arm as you're reaching it down to the floor? And whichever direction you are doing, could you reverse the pattern? Reverse the pattern. So you stay looking down as you're reaching the arm down and back up. Good. And then come back up. Good. And then this time pause, bring the left arm so it's just on the other thigh. Good. And begin again to reach it down as you turn the arm and the fist in one direction and then the other. Just reaching it down and up. Good. Down and up. So you stay as if you're looking over the shoulder. You can feel how the chin comes to effectively rest pretty much on the shoulder as you're reaching the arm. And then keep the chin on the shoulder and bring the um, left palm to rest on the right shoulder. And then use your right hand just to support, cup the left elbow, which you point forward. So the chin is resting on the shoulder. And then just move the elbow a little bit from side to side Good. and then you can lift it a little bit up a little bit down Good. and then maybe even make a small circle with the elbow but keeping the chin resting on the shoulder and then reverse Good. and then release And then um, have your right hand just inside, kind of in the space between the inside of the right thigh. And then begin to reach the hand towards the floor and then bring it back up. So the shoulder is rolling as if you're screwing or unscrewing something into the floor, reaching it down and up. Good. Down and up. Good. And then whichever direction, are you screwing something in or screwing, unscrewing something, could you change, change the pattern as you're reaching the arm down and up. Good. And then pause. Bring the right hand over to the, to the left. Again, imagine you're just reaching the arm down as you're turning it around itself it's reaching it down and up Good. and then you'll discover oh, maybe the chin is coming to rest quite nicely on the shoulder bring, keep the chin on the shoulder bring the right hand onto the left shoulder and support the right elbow with the palm of the left hand and then just begin to explore turn, taking the elbow a little bit right and left Good. maybe a little bit forward and back or up and down Good. and then begin to make a small circle circle in one direction and then the other And then pause, take a, take a rest. Interesting movements in the, in the neck. Good. And now, could you turn a little bit to your uh, right again? Have the left arm reaching down between the legs towards the, the floor. And see, can you take your right arm up towards the ceiling and then think you're turning one fist one direction 
the other fist the other direction, reaching down, good, and up. And every time the left arm goes closer to the floor, can you let the head hang, hang towards that shoulder? We're turning one arm in one direction, other arm in the other direction, just trying to roll the fists. Good. Please leave that alone, come back to centre. I really loved exploring some of these. I know sometimes the arm position can be a little bit uh, um, uh, tire tiring, but I love them because of the way it begins to get movement, particularly at the base of the, of the neck. Now, please um, turn to your left. Have the right arm reaching down towards the floor, other arm towards the ceiling. And could you begin to rotate one arm in one direction and then the other? And each time the arm is lengthening down towards the floor, can you let the, head, the ear or the head hang towards that arm as you're going up and down? Nice. Easy breathing. Good. And then pause. Leave that alone. And then take your feet a bit wider. Take both fists up at shoulder height. And begin again just to explore as if you're trying to stab someone. <laughs> stab someone out to the side. Good. And begin to allow your ear to, to fall towards the lengthening, lengthening arm. Good. Good. And then pause, just rest for a second. And then take the arms back up with your soft fist. And this time, let the ear fall to the arm that's shortening towards you. Ear falling towards the arm that's shortening towards you. Good. And then leave that alone. Good. And then please once more turn to your right. The arms are just down this time. And return to looking down, letting the weight round back onto your left sit bone. And then looking forward and up. But as you look forward and up, keep the chin close to the throat as the head goes up and back. So looking down, letting the weight roll onto your left sit, sit bone. And then as you begin to look up, think of the chin coming close to the throat as the back of the head goes up and back. Looking down. And then think of the chin coming close to the throat as you bring the weight onto the right sit bone and then come back. Good. And then come back to centre. And then please turn to your comfortable left knee, the arms just down by your side. And then looking down letting the back round so the weight pulls onto the right sit bone. As you look up, think of the chin staying close to the throat as the head goes up and back. So, <laughs> I have to do that and look at the screen at the same time. So looking down and then as you're looking up, keep the chin in close to the throat as the head goes up and back. Okay. So we're not dropping the head back we're kind of lifting it up through the whole of the chest and the spine, participating. Good. And then please leave it alone and come back to centre. And then please just once more turn to your right. Whoops. So that I can see a lot further. Come back 
and then turn to your left, good, and then come back to centre. So I um, hope you enjoyed uh, FitSit class, a uh, lot of movement in the neck and shoulders, so uh, do take things easy for the rest of the day, and thank you very much everyone.